Oh, and here he is. It's mine, so. So, Leonardo da Vinci, so there I was on Skype, connecting with Australia, and, and through he came. I'm going, this man lived in the 1400s. He was an artist. He was a bit of an inventor, and he was a bit of a grumpy old kid. And all this information was coming through. And it suddenly occurred to me who he was, and I thought, can't be. No. Can't be, can't be. But there was information, and, and he was lots of private information, which I can't divulge for the woman herself, but also about her work as an art therapist and why he was connected with her. So then I, I hung up on Skype, and I went, I was a bit kind of celebrity struck, really. And I thought, <laughs> I can't pass this opportunity. I've got to talk to this man a bit more. So I'm going, are you still there? I go, yes. And I went, ooh. I said, are you kind of like really <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci <laughs> in the 1400s? Like, is it, is it really you? And he was like, um, not what you think. Oh. He said, well, even if I was to go to great lengths to explain it to you, you could only understand about 30%. And I went, uh-huh, all right then. I want the 30 to say it. So we went, oh, all right then. He said, I'm going to have to be a bit creative. Are oh, you creative? Good, I can live with creative. Be creative, I want to know. He said, well, it's a bit like this. And I've always got a cup of hot water on the go, which is just as well, because he used this as a metaphor, and I have it here so you can see it. Hmm. I said, imagine that this cup of water is floating in a sea of water and this cup is your body and the water inside is your soul hmm. he said and every drop of that water is a microcosm of the macrocosm so if you just took one drop out that one drop contains the whole of your lifetime experiences just like the whole of your soul does and water is a really good way of describing the soul because it fills the cup, the shape of whatever shape the cup is. Oh, rather than like a diamond, which is hard, and we're all different facets of a diamond. I'm liking this idea, this water. Hmm. He said, so when you're in this cup, you are seemingly separated from the flow, but the cup is an illusion. Although it seems real to you, this is the bit that you can only get 30% of, right, just go with me. All right then. Mm -hmm. So it seems real, but actually you're never separated because the body isn't waterproof. It's permeable. And some of that energy will come in and some of your energy will escape out. So there's this flow going on that you can bring information in and information seeps out about you into this ocean of energy that you call the omniversal mind. Okay. So I coined the phrase omniversal mind when I wrote my first book, The Art of Being Psychic. So I think of the omniversal mind as being this container of energy of everything that there ever was and ever is. And I called it the om because it's that's that with my question then. Human. The old. The beginning. So okay, so he was working with me with this, which is all very nice. And he said, So when the cup is finished and the cup is gone, the residual memory of who you are holds the water together even though the cup's gone. So when you die and the body falls away and the soul comes out of the body, it's still held in the shape of the cup for a little while because your mind is addicted to that personality. So he said, are you hearing me? You're addicted to who you are. Okay. He said, so whatever your addictions are before you die, I suggest you get rid. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can go with that. What, even chocolate? It's special. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <coughs> it might be a toughie, but Okay, I can get that. Is it because whatever you're addicted to will hold you in that form and it will keep you enslaved in the cycle of life, death and rebirth? Mm -hmm. Okay, I get that. So if I want to not be held in the cycle of life, death and rebirth, I've got to give up my addiction to chocolate. Oh yeah. Damn. All right, okay. Maybe I can do that. 
So then we went a bit further. He said, so once you've given up your addictions to being stuck in that body that then is stuck within this world, so this is a lot of how we need to do spirit release because these spirits get stuck and addicted into their body and they don't let go and go into the ocean. And if they get stuck for long enough, they reincarnate as a whole soul and come back. As a complete soul, in the memory of who they were, they come back into the body as that whole complete person that died but never separated into soul, never separated into spirit, remained as a soul. So we have to get that uh, last two or three sentences. Okay. So he was saying that if the soul remains addicted to that body, who they were, they can reincarnate back into the physical body as the soul of the other person. So when you die, your soul remains intact. It doesn't go into spirit and spread within the ocean of energy. I'll give you the, the three scenarios he told me. The difference between a ghost, a soul, and a spirit. It might help to understand that first. So the ghost is when something happens in this dimension that's emotionally charged. It creates a ghost. So if somebody dies and there's an emotional situation, it creates a ghost. And that ghost is like a video recording. It's got no soul, it's got no consciousness, it's a video recording, it's a residual energy. And it does the same thing over and over and over and again, regardless of what the audience do. So it's like a video playing on the screen. The audience get up and, and leave, the video still plays on the screen. It doesn't give a damn what the audience does. This is a ghost. And when I started to do the time travel work, I realized that we have ghosts in our system of emotional events that trap us in a certain way of behavior. But I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay? So for now, it's just the ghosts that are in residual energy within this dimension. So like Anne Boleyn is seen with her head tucked under her arm, walking the bloody tower, on the same track, day after day, doing the same thing, because it's, it's a recording of that event. So there's no soul of Anne Boleyn there. It's just the ghost. Then he said, the difference between the ghost and the soul is, the soul is an individual personality, like this water in my cup, that's been imbibed with the consciousness of this lifetime. But only this lifetime. <coughs> so it remembers being addicted to being Juno Lenny Lays as me in here. So every single drop of this water contains all the memories of my experiences in my life. And it remains separate fundamentally from the flow as long as I'm addicted to being in my body and being addicted to my soul after my body's gone. So I go into the astral, addicted to being Juno Lenny Lay, I, rem I remain looking and being like Juno Lenny Lay. If you, has any, have you all seen the movie The Matrix? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Anybody not? If you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch it. But within the movie The Matrix, Morpheus takes Neo into a computer program as part of his training. They go inside, they're wired in through the back of the neck, and they go into this computer program, and there's nothing in there. But the way that he projects himself is his residual image, the way he remembers himself. So it looks pretty much like he looks in the real world, slightly different clothing, slightly mirrored image of himself, the way these spirit people see themselves. This is your residual memory that you contain within your mind, within your consciousness. And that's what a soul can do. <coughs> it can appear to be um, your residual memory. So that is what a soul is, the residual memory of the personality that lived a life in this dimension. Okay. And it can go into the astral and remain in that as long as it's addicted to being that. And as long as its mind's not free to see that it can release that. He also said something to me which I found very, very shocking. And I've just written an article for it for Mindscape magazine. And it's very, very shocking. He said to me, so that when you die, he said, remember, there's media in the astral. What? There's media in the astral. What do you mean? Is it just like there's media here that tells you lies? You know, they tell you lies to sell papers. 
there's media in the astral and they will show you things in order to get you sucked back into the system. So when you see this light that comes up and everybody says, you have to follow the light to be saved, don't follow the light. What? Don't follow the light? No, don't follow the light. You're kidding, right? No, don't follow the light because it's the media light and that will suck you back into the system. Stand in your power and wait until the light comes from within because that's not a media light. The other light, where they show you pictures of Jesus and Buddha and your mum and your dad and everybody <coughs> standing in this light, he said, it's false. He said, and I fell for it several times before I realised, don't do it. Is this part of the 30% that I'm not really getting yet? All right then, okay, I won't follow the light. So by now I'm, I'm actually in shock. Because I've never heard this before. Pardon, you mean the light as in also the... Because we're all told, when you die, a light comes, follow the light. That's ah, what that we're told. Mind. Sorry, no, I thought you mean like teachings of people, you know, talking no, about... No, 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 but, but it's, it's, there's media hype. Everybody writes it, everybody says, yeah. when you die mm -hmm. and you go into this place, a light comes, follow the light, go, move into the light and you will be saved. Christianity tells us. All the religions tell us. What? Apparently not. When... Um, you finally leave your addictions, it's then that you leave your etheric body. Mm. Well, your etheric body is only a residual memory of your Quite. physical body. Yes. So then what he says is, this water gets poured into the ocean, and then it brings its wisdom into the whole ocean. No longer are you an individual, you're part of the one. And should you decide to reincarnate, it would only take one drop of that energy mm -hmm. to come yes, back. To re so this is why Leonardo da Vinci could be a drop in many, many different people. God, it kind of makes sense of all the, the problems that other reincarnation theories bring. It solves them all, in my mind. Because if you only have to have one drop, because it's like a hologram, one drop contains the whole. So would you say that um, beings like an angel, um, would perhaps have been people who, or perhaps have never been people, but you know, they didn't follow the line. <laughs> mm. or, or at least they stopped following stopped the line following after the line. many times of following the line and realising, oh, here I go again. Mm. Which is kind of what the Buddha says. <coughs> and there's a lot of this in since I've read in Tibetan, in the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, they say, don't be distracted by things of the earth. That's what they mean. Mm -hmm. But he gave it to me in a way that is, to me, much more practical to use and not so quite so esoteric. But as this following the light is just in the moment of your death? Yes. Or it's every day moment because you're every day dying also? Is that well, yes. <laughs> Whenever the light, be sure that it's... Hold back, is this the true light? Mm. Every time you hear a headline, is yeah. it true? Yeah. Is Big Ben leaning because yeah. it's been, or did it suddenly happen because there was an explosion underneath? Who yeah. knows? What's mm. the truth? Right. God, that would be a real test, wouldn't it? If you pass over, go into the transition, they're your parents. Sorry, Mum. Bye, Mum, you can go round to get me. I'm free. <laughs> God, imagine. Okay, so so this was, and he also shared with me ways of doing time travel, which is is also what I'm teaching, where we literally go back to come forward. But I'll I'll go into a little bit more detail of that a bit later. But that's basically his um, take on having us understand reincarnation, but knowing that we can only really get 30% of what it is. So there's there's more to it than that, but that's in a nutshell of a way that we can understand it in the way that we understand time. Because time isn't, is it, the way we think it is. And I'm saying that to Sybil, because Sybil has done time travel work with me and she's, she's now a time traveler officially. And she's done some extraordinary things, which if we have time, she'll share with you as well. So time isn't the way we think. But at that time, I didn't know that because it's taken me three years to bring all these puzzles together to make it so that I can talk about it in a linear way to people that understand time as linear. <laughs>